<lacht> Hi. Äh, Menschen. Ja, Ibim ist wieder da. Hier auf, äh, auf Laserguckenland, dem äh, freundlichsten Server in der Galaxie. Wie man hier im Chat sieht. Ähm, ja. Äh, ja, Laserguckenland, ihr wisst Bescheid. Der Gurkenserver Vanilla Anarchie Server ohne Regeln mit der IP 149.202.127.134. Wir pumpen heute Defcon 24 von Brad Dyson. Oh mein Gott. Ähm, den Talk. Oh, bitte lasst mich das nicht aussprechen. Uh, how to root an embedded Linux box with Seawing Needle? Uh, ja, auf jeden Fall, uh, let's go. Link ist uh, vermutlich in der Beschreibung. Sonst uh, groß K, R, N, T, klein V, 3, O, X, D, K, E, ne? Wisst Bescheid hier, URL. Okay. Let's go. Wo waren wir stehen geblieben? Essen und so Kram, ne? Hier, wenn ihr den Dude mal sehen wollt, der hier die ganze Zeit redet, so sieht er aus. Ähm, ja, das war es jetzt aber auch schon. It's easy, it's, uh, it's pretty dramatic, and it provides a teachable moment about designing more secure systems. But it is a novelty, and it's a novelty because it is, uh, it's, it's risky, it's crude, and it's perhaps for Ich sollte wahrscheinlich ein bisschen lauter machen, damit ihr auch was hört, oder? But it sure is fun. And when you do this, uh, you do this device, like, you can, you can demo this attack to your mom, and she'll just be like, oh, I get it. So, let's just quick get to the demo. So, to set the stage here, uh, we use this on a lot of devices, but this one in particular is an embedded Linux device with uh, U-Boot as the bootloader. There's no JTAG. That's actually been turned off with microfuses inside the CPU. So that's gone, can't find it. JTAGulator was great, but couldn't find JTAG at all. And because this device had had some challenges before, let's say, um, it, was, uh, it, had a, it had a homegrown secure bootloader added. So get into the demo here. This is the system booting up. And you'll see why we call this pin deponent in a moment. Uh, this is my trusty, like, 1995 uh, multimeter just jamming into the flash chips. And I'll show you where in, the, in just a moment. But as the system is booting, it's doing a cryptographic checksum across the flash. Ich weiß nicht, ob man im Talk irgendwie was sehen muss. Vielleicht sollte ich den Talk wechseln. Ah, keine Ahnung. It does a fallback to a secondary partition. And it's going to start that in just a moment. And as you can see, using a serial console on these devices, you can track what's going on. Um, I didn't put the clip in there, but I'm again poking the flash device to get the second uh, partition to fail as well. And they designed this device to, to not respond to any serial input. But what happens is they misconfigured it so that if it fails twice in a row, the primary and the secondary partition, I get a U-boot prompt. Excellent, that gets me in. That's nice. <laughs> so, the primary misconfiguration was not checking their failure paths. That happens, as I found out, more often than you would think. There's also going to be two kinds of flash devices you'll see in these demos. Uh, this is a parallel flash device. It comes in a standardized package, typically, a TSOP 48 package. You can actually attack it from the left or the right side. Uh, I'm attacking the right side between two of the data lines that feed data out of the flash device. Uh, when it's uh, called by the CPU. Um, and, and as you saw, it's pretty low tech. You just poke it. Um, but there's been a lot of prior work on this. Uh, glitching as a form of attack has been done numerous times uh, and just some really amazing stuff that like extracting cryptographic keys. Ja, ich weiß nicht, ob die Steine hier hingesetzt, aber Leute, da machst du nichts. Um, there's also been other blog posts about this precise thing using, you know, a transient electrical fault to get a failure mode that's advantageous to doing a penetration test. Um, and so there's some of the links you can check out. But what I want to do today is just provide more details so that when you sit down, pull out some devices from the closet, try this, 
you might be surprised, as I was, how often this works. Um, I have to warn you, uh, well, first of all, this is Grog. Grog's our mascot. Uh, sometimes, you know, you, you try elegant techniques and they work. Sometimes you just beat stuff with rocks um, and, and, and you get what you want that way. Um, but you can definitely break your hardware doing this. I haven't yet destroyed anything, but you can. And, and the way you'll do that is by exceeding, um, there's an absolute maximum current that can go out of each IC device. And if you exceed that for too long, um, then that device might just be, you know, kaput. The black smoke comes out. You what can also did temporarily it? I exact uh, cause the device to fail. They have sometimes protection circuitry. Had so nicht that gesagt, oder? you see the operating is, is this that pin just shuts off. Usually power cycling will fix that. I've had that happen a few times. Um, and of course, depending on what access you have to the device, like if you have JTAG, you don't need to do this. Um, if you have other means to get what you need, use the safer means, certainly. It, it will you know, prevent you from breaking something. Uh, if there are any time travelers in the audience, go back and listen to uh, Joe Grand and Joe Fitzpatrick's um, 101 Ways to Brick Your Hardware. I, I think I'm adding a new manner to do so. Oh, ich glaube, den Talk kenne ich, oder? Und das wird mir ständig vorgeschlagen. This is a general architecture diagram for the kinds of devices that we work with. CPU devices, 32 or 64-bit uh, processors, running Linux, using typically a bootloader, bootloader like U-Boot. Um, and you're trying to interrupt the communications between the external flash device and that CPU. Uh, these can either be serial or parallel flash devices. The reason that this works is that systems boot in stages. And what's being shown right here is the activity on the flash bus. You don't need to, you know, looking at trying to decrypt the details of this by zooming in is not helpful for this, but you want to get an idea of like the wall clock timing on this and figure out, well, when is the bootloader being loaded, like it's shown on the left? When is the kernel being loaded? What's the duration where the device is booting? And then where does the user space init process kick off? And you can actually attack in two different places. The most successful for me has been interrupting um, the loading of the kernel so that you fail to a UV prompt. But I'll show you an example in a second of something that was that's actually much more surprising to me. So Scheiße, example, der Baum ist nie wirklich abgefackelt dahin. Well um, this, this was a device where, where JTAG wasn't going to be an option, uh, you know, based on how they designed the hardware. Oh, fuck. Um, but I found a point later during the init process where poking the serial flash device caused the init process to fail and give me exactly what I wanted out of this. A root shell on the device. Yeah! So this kind of misconfiguration is much more rare. The, the forgetting to have a, a useful failure mode for load for U-boot, that's pretty common. I've seen that a lot. Um, but this one was more rare. And the reason for it is uh, this this uh, embedded Linux system had been really cleanly set up. It, it was great work. Oh. Um, and they had but they had left something to help the development. When the primary application started up, it would grab all the serial ports. Throw up an authentication prompt. It wasn't Getty. It was something that was yeah. in the application. Um, and then, um, but then Sorry, the alle Leute, die Russisch können. <laughs> the next step in the init process would be just run a shell. Now, another thing that happened, another characteristic of the system was important to this. Uh, this system was using BusyBox. BusyBox is like a, a what's called a multi-call binary. It's like a Swiss Army knife that does all the things that a typical Linux system needs, but does it with just one binary. And so since most of the pages for that had already loaded before the application we caused to fail had started, when that application failed, even though I was screwing up Flash for it, BusyBox was already resident memory. I think it might have been different oh, if I had to go load other pages, time. because I wouldn't have been able to time that attack very elegantly. This is also uh, an example of a serial flash device. These typically have a, an 8 pin uh, no. pin out, very standardized, yeah, yeah. much bigger device, you know, so uh, you can use a multimeter probe to you know, poke at this. And I was uh, oh, the chip select, which says, hey, flash device, read me out some of that data, uh, and the actual data output on that. Wenn so ich da oben kurz Lava hinsetze, 
verrecken dann gleich all meine Hühner. Ja, irgendwie ist der sehr, wie soll ich sagen, hardware der Tor kommt mit vielen Bildern und so, aber wir sind gleich durch, also... Whatever. Whatever, Also ich glaube, das Einzige, was ich mitgenommen habe und auch mitnehmen werde, ist, wenn man irgendwo in der Hardware reinschießt, dann kann es sein, dass das verkackt, ist, richtig zu laden und dann hast du es gewonnen oder so. Ja, well, wir schauen trotzdem fertig. Wow, die sind ja nicht sehr effektiv, diese Creeper auf Stein. Ja, das macht alles irgendwie nicht so Sinn, was ich hier mache. Habe ich jetzt einen Enderpearl? Nee. Brennt man eigentlich noch, wenn man von einem Zombie geht? Ah, das ist gar nicht mehr so. Früher hat man noch da gebrannt. Ja, war geplant. Ja, scheiße, ich brauch doch Stein. Ach, ich Ich bin so blöd wie scheiße. 
traces that are on the uh, outer layers of the PCB, you can actually scrape off the solder mask and get at those, um, but you're going to have less options. And so it just makes it harder for an attacker. So VGA devices, uh, some security conscious PCB design and PCB routing uh, can make a big difference. And, and the last, which I, I think you know everybody should be doing when they lay out these devices to help improve security, is just be very terse about what you're doing. If you have a serial console, certainly don't accept input on it unless you really want that for some reason. Um, and boot that thing fast. Uh, you can get like embedded Linux systems to boot you know well under a second, and it just makes it hard for a hand time to tap like this. You could do something more elegant and crafty, of course. Um, but you know that's 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 more work an attacker. Maybe they'll move elsewhere. So that's the last bit of this. Um, Max is here somewhere. Max is right there. We're going to be uh, outside to take some questions, and if you have some good questions, we're going to have something for you. But uh, I'm Brad Dixon. Uh, thanks so much for your attention. Appreciate it. Yeah, I think this was then auch von meiner Seite mit der Episode. Das war der Talk hier, ne? von Brad Dixon, How to Root an Embedded Linux Box. Ähm, ja, soweit so gut. Wir sehen uns in der nächsten Folge.